Welcome back to the channel, CGC family. Uh, today's the day. Xbox developer, developer direct. <laughs> kind of follow my words there. Uh, 12 p.m. Pacific time. It'll be uh, 3 p.m. my time Eastern. Um, this is what we're expecting to be the what the the, the turnaround, the big change in direction presentation hype building for xbox game studios games uh making this video in response to a good friend of mine's uh supreme king gaming uh the title of the video i'm making response to of his is the uh is what uh xbox gonna do if the abk active activision blizzard king deal falls through um i have theories and feelings about that and i am going to take my time to express those uh you may even want to get a a, a tinfoil hat because I, if you've kept up with my videos then you know that i have my own theories about what has and hasn't already transpired and reasons why those things may or may not be uh i got a new one today uh, just sitting around thinking about it because I found out I don't have to work tomorrow. It's severe weather. Um, so I figured, you know what, why not collect my thoughts and put them together for this video? So, uh, as I said, Supreme King Gaming he, Gaming, he basically made a video saying, well, what happens if this Activision Blizzard King deal doesn't go through for Microsoft? And, of course, uh, if... If you're familiar with it, I believe they're going to get back at least $60 billion of the seventy, the $69, basically $70 billion that they attempted to spend on Activision Blizzard. Uh, if the deal doesn't go through by a certain time, I know there's going to be like a 2 or $3 billion penalty, something like that. Um, this is what I think is going to happen if it doesn't go through keep in mind i do believe it will but what i believe is going to happen is that if microsoft is truly willing to commit to gaming despite the fact that they don't get to buy this big developer then what we're more than likely going to be looking at is a microsoft that hopefully will be willing to money hat and throw cash at exclusive titles from publishers and developers the same way Sony does. Because if that's how Sony wants to compete, you know, then and the U.S. government and several other governments don't want to allow you to compete, you know, the way you can compete, then you have to, you know, for back, lack of a better term, stoop to their level. You know, um, we if you're a fan of Xbox, and I'm a fan of Xbox, I'm a fan of PlayStation, Nintendo, I'm a fan of all games. But as a fan of any of these companies, I put their feet to the fire whenever they do something because I want all of them to be great. I, again, I come from a time where there was always multiple choices, meaning more than two. I always could mess with a third option, and that third option had great software. And I wanted, I wanted to stay that way. You know, I, I even had Stadia, and you know, we don't need to go into how that ended up. Uh, this recently just died, but you know, I'm willing to give anything a chance if the idea is at the very least conceptually okay, which Stadia mostly wasn't, but that's another video I digress. If Microsoft were to get back 60 billion of this 69 billion, basically 70 billion dollars that they were to spend on Activision, one of s several things would happen. First, and I could not know what the hell I'm talking about. Activision and, you know, the, the guys on their chair could just see uh, these this past year, in particular these past five or six months of transgressions is nothing more than business being business. But from what I can tell, Activision has hired someone to help push this thing through and handle it. Uh, the young lady's been making a lot of tweets online every time some news has popped up, and particularly news with the FTC and how uh, against this deal they are. If Activision is going through that much trouble, in my opinion, 
that means that the people on the board really want to get out now sony stops that and they still have three years left on this call of duty exclusive content deal which will probably be more skins and uh what did they get in modern warfare 2 this year a uh a exclusive operator or something like that after that three years are up or three games whatever the actual uh time lapse is for that i have a feeling activision is not going to be willing to talk to them as quickly as they were the last time they renewed it i mean i'm pretty sure somebody or a bunch of somebody's at activision are not very happy with the fact that Sony is stopping them from getting their cut of $70 billion. So they've made, I think they've made, not if not so much enemies, but, you know, bitter uh, associates there with that. And I'm pretty sure if Microsoft doesn't end up owning Activision Blizzard, Activision Blizzard is probably going to give Microsoft first dibs on whatever. I'm also pretty sure that a lot of the companies that Sony has kind of down talked during this whole thing, the EA and their inability to take two interactive to an extent and their inability to make something on Call of Duty's level, I'm pretty sure a lot of those companies aren't going to be willing to deal with them either. But on Xbox side, getting back to them and them committing to this idea of being committed to gaming. They're going to have to start throwing that money around. A lot of the stuff that I'm hearing about Sony in the background, uh, like, okay, so we, we, we've we heard that a Metal Gear uh, is coming to the PlayStation exclusive. I believe it's a remake of Metal Gear 1. They're already getting, like, a remake to, to Silent Hill 2 exclusively from a Bloober team. Uh, or it might be Silent Hill 1. I don't remember correctly. Uh, I've heard a rumor of a Blue Point uh, created souls like Castlevania coming to the PlayStation. Like they're already gathering up IP from Konami and throwing it in their catalog as if it's theirs. I expect Microsoft to do the same in turn. And I'm talking like they really need, like I would attack Capcom and say, yo, give us Lost Planet back. The, the most successful council you ever had launched with Lost Planet and Dead Rising. Why not go back to Capcom, throw them a big ass check and say, yo, we need those back. Let's bring those back. Let's restart those in the spirit of what they were. Like $60 billion will go a long way. I don't think Sony spends $10 billion a year getting the exclusives they get. Microsoft's getting $60 billion, And from what I understand, they always have change and I use that term loosely, sitting around to spend on gaming and other acquisitions uh, company-wide. $60 billion going back to Microsoft is not what Sony wants. And this is where I get into what I believe is actually happening. If you keep your ears to the streets and you listen out for the rumors, and there have been a lot since Microsoft started buying whole publishers, developers and basically have shown their hand as being this company that gives a damn about gaming is going to be fully committed to it they've rebranded the branch of xbox as just xbox like and and, and, and this is an aside uh if you've noticed if you look on your playstation controller let me grab mine real quick one sec here If you look, if you look on your PlayStation controllers, the uh, Sony label on them has become more subtle. It's still there at the very top of the controllers, both for the PS4 and the PS5. But like in the PS4 controller, it's a little bit toward the front, right over the touchpad. And on the PS5 controller, it's towards the back. Now, I know you're saying, well, what the hell does that have to do with anything? This is a branding thing guys um playstation for all intents and purposes has rebranded itself as an entity that is a part of sony but n not necessarily just is 
a part of Sony. Like it's its own thing that happens to be a part of Sony. If you catch my drift, Microsoft is actually in the midst of doing that with Xbox, where Xbox is obviously a Microsoft thing, but they are more so trying to be a thing that happens to be owned by Microsoft rather than this branch of Microsoft. That, I believe, not only helps when it comes to acquisitions and not making yourself look as big or seem as big. Like, you know, you know, we're part of PlayStation. I mean, we're a part of Sony, but, you know, we're our own thing. Like, our funding is different. And I think Microsoft is doing the same thing. And a lot of that is, I think, a part of getting regulators off your back, one. And then, two, I think it also has a lot to do with uh, basically just a separation of an entity you really can't rely on like that. Like, sure, Microsoft makes a lot of money. Like, right after they bought uh, or they put the bid in for Activision Blizzard, uh, I guess that's what you could call it since it wasn't an actual purchase yet. Still isn't. Uh, they had a military contract come up that was worth twice that. And you saw a lot of people talking about, well, wow, they already made the money back. It's like, no, Microsoft a branch of microsoft was given x amount of dollars they spent 70 billion of it and another branch of microsoft the main branch the software branch the computer software branch more particular made it was like some ridiculous number like 190 billion dollars off a military a u.s military contract and then of course microsoft has all these deals with the nba i think the nfl they make a lot of money so the 70 billion dollars really wasn't much of them but i believe and again this is an aside a lot of this rebranding and microsoft's talking about it's, it's it's all corporate bs right i'm not trying to uh cover that up but a lot of that stuff comes down to cleverly saying look we are only really this thing just because we're connected to this much larger entity in you know, way of ownership doesn't mean that whatever they have, we have access to, which is still kind of BS because now I'm going to get into what I actually think Sony has been up to. Now, if you're paying attention to the uh, Wall Street guys, the big business guys, rooters, things like that, they're bringing these articles and they're basically saying what in Sam Hill is the FCC doing? They have no chance of actually winning this case. Um, Microsoft's clearly got, you know, uh, they're within the with the, their legal rights to own this. There's very few holes in their argument for buying this company, and it's to the point where even a gentleman who bought—I mean, well, he fought against Microsoft in the '90s and beat them in several uh, antitrust cases is looking at this case and saying you know this is not a good look you guys really need to let this go there's no way you're going to win i think sony already knew that right I, i'm i'm going to go out on a limb and say not only did sony already know that they weren't going to win this but sony is doing all of this this uh parading and 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 whining and snitching if you want to call it that because they're trying to delay this they know that one delaying this deal is going to cost microsoft money two it also makes it nearly impossible for microsoft to move on with other deals you see if microsoft wants to negotiate with other companies about acquisitions they can speak of it but they better not do it because then the claims of the FTC and several other other, other uh, trading uh, trading I, I guess you call them organizations uh, fair trade organizations that are s- scoping this thing and like look see that's what they're doing they they don't even care that we're looking at this with a raised eyebrow they're already buying more stuff Sony knows that. More specifically, Jim Ryan knows that. And I know a lot of people go at Jim Ryan saying this guy's not a gamer. He's a businessman. But you also have to remember, he is a businessman, like you said. He doesn't spend his time playing games. I can log on to my Xbox right now. Phil Spencer's probably playing a game. I like Phil Spencer, but he may not be the best businessman in between the two. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure he isn't. 
yeah, Jim Ryan gets his games out on time because Jim Ryan doesn't give a damn about the developers' feelings or anything like that. You got to get this thing done. We need this out. I can give you a little bit of space, but I need it out, and I need you talking about it so we can sell it. Sony does that better, and they've always hired people who've done that better. Jim Ryan, I'm, I, I'm starting to believe Jim Ryan knows there's no way in hell that anything he does or any of these regulators do is going to stop this deal from going through. What he does know is that because the deal isn't going through immediately or as fast as Microsoft wanted it to at least, that gives him the opportunity to go to talk, to go and talk to companies that maybe Microsoft would have talked to and negotiate buyouts, negotiate exclusive rights to things. He's been talking to CD Projekt Reds, according to rumors. He's been talking to uh, a lot of companies. You see, he's pulled the, the, the Konami things. He's got the uh, Silent Hill, and he's probably got a Metal Gear coming, a, a Metal Gear remake coming to the PlayStation exclusively, and possibly at Castlevania. He's been doing a lot of that stuff. You know, what's the cost of going wine and make yourself look weak while in the background you're around, you, you, you're stealing or snaking deals that Microsoft might have gotten had, you know, you let this go through at a speedy pace. You didn't mind the Elder Scrolls going because, you know, Bethesda was putting out some stinkers and, you know, even with their pedigree of good games, there's still a lot of question marks which these developer directs should hopefully answer in a positive way for Microsoft's sake. But even with Call of Duty, if you pay attention to Call of Duty, the numbers for Call of Duty initially are still very good. The game still sells well. It's still a strong seller. But the problem Call of Duty has been having for years is player retention. No one's playing the damn thing after a month. And after two months, even less people are playing it. And after three months, you get the point. And if people aren't playing a game that has a bunch of microtransactions, who buys the microtransactions? I'm willing to say that despite its initial sales, Call of Duty is on its way out. And I don't think it's as important to Jim Ryan as he's making it out to be. All of that nonsense about it's this big multimedia uh, project or game or, or, or piece of medium and nobody can make anything of that caliber. So let me get this straight. And I'm just going to call a spade a spade. Bullshit, bullshit. You too, forgive me, but the cussing word was necessary in this instance. You just launched two weekends ago. The Last of Us TV show, which I believe had the second highest ratings only to the new Game of Thrones series in 2022 of recent. I don't know if that was it was all time second highest ratings or if it's just the second highest ratings in the last year to Game of Thrones. But I know Last of Us did really well two weekends ago when it came out. You got this multiplayer game that no one's talking about. Detail wise, there's a couple of pictures of it going out there, but you know, and it's concept art, but no one really knows anything about it. And I'm pretty sure a big reveal is coming for that tune with all soon with all the hype that you know comes with that. You got this big game that's filling in this space, by the way, that the Walking Dead TV show just left the Sunday night. Big zombie post apocalyptic apocalyptic world drama show. Your games, the TV show based off your hit game, is filling that hole in. And ratings wise, with the critics, with the fans, it is over. Then you got a big multiplayer game coming out with it, and I have a feeling that not only will that multiplayer game be very good, will, I think it will be very good because Naughty Dog's multiplayer is generally very good. It may not have uh, the standing power or the, the lasting power of, say, an uh, Xbox game like Gears of War, but it's always been entertaining. But what if, this is a big what if, what if that sham game, that, 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 that game that everybody's been kind of, Nah, I don't know about this one. That the the, uh, the day before or the day after that that, that zombie game 
that a lot of people on the internet are like ragging because these guys are just showing you concept videos and not real gameplay. What if The Last of Us 2's multiplayer is something akin to that? Open world, Destiny-ish, drop in, drop out, multiplayer where you can come in contact with uh, other players and kill them. You can go straight to deathmatch or you can just go into the open world and gather supplies, build bases, stuff like that. What if it's something like Fallout 76, but, you know, good at launch? You know, Fallout 76 is decent now, but at launch, no. What if The Last of Us 2 is something like that? The Last of Us 2 multiplayer, mind you, is something like that. But you're saying that nobody can build anything like Call of Duty. You got a hit TV show, two hit games, and a possible megaton multiplayer game coming out. I call bullshit, and I think they knew this. Strate strategically, you're wasting Microsoft's time. You're keeping them out of the hunt. And you're building the same mega project, mega media game that you're saying nobody could build. Because Call of Duty ain't got no damn TV show. Call of Duty's got a couple of commercials with some rappers and some comedians in it. Basketball players... Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, the past few years. But Call of Duty doesn't have a TV show. Call of Duty doesn't have movies. Call of Duty doesn't have an HBO deal. The Last of Us does. The Last of Us could potentially, between all the media that it's touching, be bigger than Grand Theft Auto. Potentially. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that that's actually factual, but... You get my drift. I think Sony's all along known what they were doing because Jim Ryan's a businessman. You may not like his methods. You may not like the way he chooses to let, you know, the suits price things, but it's working. PlayStation 5 is the fastest selling PlayStation ever. Uh, this PlayStation VR is coming out next month. I already reserved mine. It's looking pretty good. The early word on it is that it's one of the most advanced uh, VR headsets out there for the price or the, 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 at least that it will be Sony knows exactly what they're doing they, they know they can't stop this deal if they can get some, some, some concessions out of it which Microsoft had already planned to do anyway so be it but whether this deal goes through or not and again I personally believe it will Microsoft still going to have a lot of work to do because their enemy their competition if you will, is very clever, a lot more clever than people are giving them credit for. Because to sit there and lie and say that nobody can build anything like that, when while I did just go on a spiel about branding yourself as not necessarily being Sony or a part of Sony so much, they're using those resources. When you watch the credits for that Last of Us TV show, Sony, Sony Television Studios, PlayStation, Naughty Dog. Everything's there. One big happy family. Sold to HBO. And don't be surprised if this PSVR 2 headset ends up with a PC compatibility patch. And there's a rumored PC launcher. Sony's actually secretly going to strike everywhere. And everything they're accusing Microsoft of doing and everything that they're saying that nobody else can do, they're doing themselves. Very clever. Very clever. Uh, anyway, those are my thoughts. I know this video ran a little long, but I had to get that out of there. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below. Like, subscribe if you uh, so please, or dislike if you didn't like the video. If you disagree with anything I said, again, like like I said, if you disagree or agree with anything I said or have any extra points to add yourself, make a reaction video. Put comments in the comment section. Do whatever you want. I have no problem with either. Have a good day, guys, and... Uh, I'm probably going to make a video about this developer direct, give my thoughts on it, see if Microsoft is smart enough to give us some surprises. They seems like they're already going in the right direction by not having a lot of people talking other than people making a game. We'll see if they've uh, we'll see if they've learned their lessons. Till then, folks. Later. Have a blessed one.